To make this Christmas stocking, take another Christmas stocking and trace around it onto a large piece of paper. Then, find at least four different fabrics with enough fabric to cut out six or seven small squares. I chose the size of three and a quarter so that the final size would be two and three quarters. Once you've done that, you can lay out the quilt blocks onto a stocking pattern and decide on the layout that you like best. And don't be afraid to switch the blocks up and the angles and see which direction and all that that you like best. I did it several times. Once you figure out what you like, you may want to go ahead and take a photograph of it. And that way, if anything happens, like a cat jumps on the table and knocks it all down, uh, you, can <laughs> you can get back what you liked. Now, once you've made your decision, sew each block from the row together, just like I have here, so that it's easier to keep everything together, keep it in order. Then, before sewing individual rows together, I would recommend ironing your block rows. It helps make the rows easier to sew together and keeps it flatter and nicer looking. Also, before sewing the rows together, I did one last check on top of the stocking pattern uh, because I knew that I hadn't quite probably cut out enough blocks because I only cut out five. That's why I recommend six or seven. So then I could figure out how many more blocks I needed to actually cut out. And then I went ahead and sewed the rows together. Now, once that's all done, you need to cut out the backing for the quilted part of your stocking. Here, I'm using a pillowcase that I bought for 50 cents at the thrift store. At first, I went ahead and pinned those two pieces directly together, but after I did a little bit of sewing down, I realized that I wanted batting between the two layers. So I removed all my stitches, cut out some batting, and then pinned the three layers together. Now, once I did that, but before quilting it, I just wasn't sure about the look. It was so poofy. But I started laying down the quilting lines and you can see it really has started looking good. And I chose straight line at an angle because it's a simple and easy design. But I do think that a fancy design style of, you know, loops or flowers or whatever would really look good as well. And you can see here that I kept some safety pins holding the layers together while quilting. And it, it helps keep the back layer taut. Well, because I can mostly just hold down the top layer, but it keeps the back layer from from being too loose. So let's go ahead and finish quilting the rest of the stocking. So here is the stocking with the quilting completed and let's take a look at the other side. As you can see, this top part is going uphill a little bit and I'm not sure if I'll keep it or I'll trim it down or just work around it, we'll see. And I've also kept the excess block fabric for now because I can just trim it down after I do the side seams and that way I have extra fabric to work with just in case. For the other side of the Christmas stocking, I used the same material that I used as a backing for the quilted side. Now two things that I want to point out that I did that I'll do differently if I make another of these stockings. First, I cut out this back piece using the pattern piece, but quilting reduces the size of your project. So this back piece is a fair amount larger than the front piece now, which usually wouldn't be a big deal, but I folded the fabric in half so that I would have the fold at the top of the opening of the Christmas stocking and I wouldn't have to do extra work. It'd be a lot neater looking, I thought, but it kind of didn't fit very well anymore. And also I chose a light color backing with these darker blocks and I don't recommend that either because you can, it really just, cause it's just glaringly bright compared to the front. So I try to get a more of a complimentary color in that shade next time. So and learn, right? So to sew on the back, I'll start with the straighter side first, then I'll see what I have to work with as I go around the rest of the stocking. The only part I'm really worried about is this upper part. I haven't completely decided what to do on the top of the quilted side, and I'll think about my options as I, as I attach the back to the front. So now that I have the back on, you can see how the back ended up taller than the front. So there's about half inch peeking out at the top. So what I have decided I'll do is I will add a strip of fabric at the top to make the front and back sides match up. My plan was already to add some decorative lace at the top. So now that I have the rest of the stocking mostly done, I'm going to go ahead and look through my options. Here are the first four options. Next, these four. I think all eight are pretty good, but I'm leaning towards this one. To add this lace, what I'm gonna do is hide this top section of the lace into what is basically the binding I'm adding at the top here. It'll look kind of like this when it's sewn up. And then I'll add a loop for the side so it can be hung up 
by the chimney with care. <laughs> now here's the top piece I ended up cutting out. It looks kind of weird, but I, I have a purpose, I promise. This wider section will be on the inside of the stocking and the shorter section will be in front. And I've already folded down and pinned the seam allowances to the inside of this. And then I'll just top stitch each side down and the top will be open so that I can insert the top of the lace into it. And to make my life just a little bit easier, I'm using the selvage at this top so I don't have to worry about the seams at the top. It won't fray and it'll look finished so I can use it as is. Now the reason I made the inside wider is because I want to cover this bit of the inside of the stocking up. So I'll get it all placed down and pin it down. And what I tried to do is make this meet to right about here on the seams so I can kind of hide this second seam. We'll see if it works out. And I think what I, well, what I'm going to have to do is make this piece slightly higher to match the back. Uh, so I'll need to be careful about the order I put the lace in there because it needs to be sewn into the top. But I also have to make sure that before I sew the side seams that I, I fold the lace over and it gets sewn into the side seams as well. To make the loop, I cut out a three by five and a half inch piece of fabric that matched my stocking. So rather than have to sew it and turn it inside out to hide seams, the easier option I think, is to fold it in half long ways to create a fold line down the middle. Then you can open it back up and take each side and fold it so that the edge touches that middle fold line that you created. Then you take that entire thing and fold it in half again and sew it right along this edge. Then you can just fold that piece in half to make the loop. So let's sew this up real quick and I'm gonna sew pretty close to the edge and here's the completed loop. I've cut out the lace and I've pinned it into the top piece. And although I did make this blue piece because the front ended up being short, it I think worked out because I like the way it allowed me to add in the lace. Otherwise, I think I would have made the backing for the quilt taller and then I would have folded the extra over the top and then attached the lace uh, to the bottom of that folded over part. And I probably would have used a different backing, uh, not the, the cream to make it match better. So let me go ahead and sew this lace right up close to the edge and then we can move on from there. The lace is now sewn in and I'll place the top piece onto the stocking itself. And this is how it's gonna look with the lace folded over. And I may end up lightly ironing to help keep this folded over before I try and sew it down. Now to sew down this extra band that I made, I'm going to sew down with the sewing machine the top part on the front. And then I, I was thinking that, uh, we'll see, but I think I'll hand sew the back uh, bottom part of it so that I can hide the seam on the front because I don't think it's going to quite match the seam like I had hoped. If the lace had been longer, I wouldn't have really probably worried about it, but I don't think the lace would cover the seam. Okay, here you see that I've sewn down the top edge of this front border. And on the back, you can see that I just went ahead and sewed through the back. I don't think it's a big deal. It's on the inside and I, I think it probably helps stabilize the opening of the of the stocking a little bit. So I think it's it'll work. So now I'll go ahead and hand sew this bottom part of the back seam so I can hide it from the front. And when I get done with that, I'll work on the loop. I've turned the stocking inside out and with the top part completed, just the top part of the sides and the loop are left. When placing the loop, remember, it will need to be placed like this with the loop on the inside so that when the stocking is flipped right side out, it will be on the outside of the stocking. Just place it near the top 
and be mindful that the top and bottom of the ends of this loop will be contained in the side seam when you sew it up. So let's turn it right side out. And you can see here that I failed to take my own advice and make sure that this loop is fully sewn into the side seams. So I will have to redo this side. But other than that, it looks pretty cute. And here it is now that I've fixed it. Yay. It looks pretty cute, and I hope that this inspires you to make one too.